In this quick tip video, we're going to be looking at a technique for creating a gradient brush. And that's going to be a real trick because Illustrator does not allow us to use gradients in brushes. We're going to use a pearl brush as our vehicle for, for learning this technique. And when we look at our file here, I have a image reference. And this is so we could draw the pearl to scale. In the middle layer, I have a path for testing the brush. And the top layer and the active layer is my work layer where I'm going to be creating the, the pearl. And so I'm going to zoom in here to get closer to our work. And of course, this is going to be a little bit easier for us to draw to scale. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. Well, I would like to draw this from the center out. So I'm going to go ahead and depress the shift key and the alt key or shift option on a Macintosh. And we can see the cursor changing in response to those modifier keys. And so I'm going to click and drag to create a simple ellipse here. And I want it to be a good size pearl here. So here's our basic ellipse. And we're not going to be needing any stroke right now. Let's go to our fill. And for our fill, I'm going to go to my swatches. And we want to use a 50% gray. And you can see the 50% black on the end of the uh, tooltip that pops up. And so using the 50% gray is going to allow us to colorize this brush and be able to have some degree of accuracy with our colors. Next step is to go ahead and copy and paste this ellipse right on top of itself. And so we'll go up here to edit on the menu bar and we'll copy and then edit and paste in front. And now I'm going to want to scale this ellipse. And I'm going to zoom in just a bit more. This will make this a bit easier. Getting closer to your work, guys, always makes it a bit easier. So I'm going to, again, using Shift and Alt or Shift and Option to scale from the center, I want to make this a bit smaller. And now I'm going to use my arrow key to nudge this up a couple of points. And now we'll need the Direct Select tool. And we'll select this bottom point. And again, I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge it up. And this is going to create a highlight shape. Now, the fill on this shape, we're going to change to white. And with the fill in front on the toolbar, I can simply click here and choose my white. Now, utilizing a blend is going to enable us to create the illusion of a gradient and be able to utilize it in a brush. So here, I'm going to get the blend tool. And we can see the hot key for that is W. And I'm going to click first one object and then the second object. We need at least two objects to create a blend. And that blend is actually a really nice illusion of a pearl. But now the blend is, if we utilize this blend as it is, it's going to create far too many anchor points, more than we need. And an optimal vector drawing only uses that number of anchor points which is necessary to create the drawing or illusion that we're trying to create. And so in the interest of doing that, we're going to get our blend options. Now, we can double click the blend tool or go up here to object and blend. And here we can attain our blend options. And right now it's set to smooth color. I'm going to go ahead and check the preview so we can see what changes are made here in the artboard as we're doing the changes. And I'm going to change from smooth color to specified steps. And this green is actually using 46 different steps. Let's go ahead and take that down to 10. And I'm going to press the Tab key. And you can just start to see the steps on the blend. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I think that it would be safe for us to go ahead and reduce that even further. So I'm going to highlight that 10-step uh, value. And now, using the down arrow key on my keyboard, I can reduce the number of steps. And with the preview box checked, I can actually see these changes as they occur. And five steps looks pretty good. That's going to reduce our number of anchor points, but still creating a beautiful illusion of a gradient. So we'll go ahead and say OK to this. And now I would like to expand the blend by clicking the twirl down or drop down here. And I, I would like to put a real fine black stroke around the outside of this to further create an illusion of depth. And so in order to do this with the best degree of accuracy, I'm going to go ahead and grab this ellipse. 
and I'm going to depress the Alt key or Option key with my left hand, and by dragging it out of the blend, I can copy it. And you can see the little plus sign next to the hand cursor. And of course, now I carried it above the, the blend, so it's, you know, it's actually covering the blend up. Let's just go ahead and click and drag it beneath the blend. And I, I usually find it easier to drag it up. That's the reason that I did that. So with that ellipse on the bottom, we do not need any fill for that. And I'm going to go ahead and get the stroke, and we'll add a black stroke. And the stroke is a bit heavy. Ideally, what we want to do is take this down to, well, the quarter point is the lowest increment of measurement available on that stroke palette, but we can reduce it even further simply by clicking in this numeric value. And I'm going to add a 1 there, which takes it from a quarter point to an eighth of a point. And the interesting thing here is because the stroke is aligned to the center of the path, we're, we're only going to see half of it, or 1 16th. And that is actually going to create a wonderful degree of detail for this small pearl. And now I'm going to select the entire contents of the work layer, which is our blend, and the outside stroke, and we'll make a new brush out of this. Now I can press the new brush icon and we're going to choose a pattern brush for this particular brush. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And when our pattern brush options window comes up, of course the name text field is, is active and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just type Perl01 and I go with the 01 because I may create a library of these things and having them numbered like that will, uh, will be a more effective use of our library. I'm going to hit the drop down here and we do not need a corner tile. That is going to further reduce the footprint or anchor points used in this drawing and further optimize our drawing. I'm going to choose the approximate path option for the fit and for the colorization method we want to choose tints and shades. Now we need to select a key color and this is a little bit tricky but we're going to get the sampler tool here and I want to click in the darkest area of this thumbnail representation. Clicking above and I get the 50% gray. You might not get it on the first click guys but just kinda of, you have to be patient with the small of a brush. And let's go ahead and say OK to this and I'm gonna zoom out a bit and now I'm gonna select the pearl path and go ahead and test out the brush. With the black stroke it's a little bit dark. Let's go ahead and go in our swatches and choose the 50% gray and that creates a beautiful brush. But now we can actually change the color of it to any color that we choose simply by changing the stroke color.